Part two, the remarkable body. Let's take a look at how the body extracts necessary nutrients and transforms food into energy for day-to-day -day functions, a process near and dear to us, digestion. Section A, the digestive system. The process of digestion is both mechanical and chemical. The primary methods of mechanical digestion are chewing and the muscular movements of the gastrointestinal or digestive tract. So, chewing is a form of mechanical digestion, as is the churning process in our stomachs. Since we all know how to chew, let's look at chemical digestion. Chemical digestion revolves around hydrolysis. Hydro means water. In hydrolysis, a large molecule is broken down into simpler compounds through the addition of water. Remember from chemistry that a molecule is two or more atoms of the same or different elements joined by chemical bonds. An example would be water, whose chemical name is H2O. Two hydrogen atoms joined with one oxygen. And speaking of water, let me explain hydrolysis before we move on with digestion. Hydrolysis is the basis of chemical digestion. What happens is that water, H2O, is split up to make smaller compounds that are easier to digest. The process works like this. The compounds that make up the foods we eat are broken down into simpler compounds by splitting up and attaching themselves with the elements of water. So one part of the compound will attach to one of water's hydrogen atoms, and the other part of the compound will join up with water's hydroxyl group, OH. Now the larger food compound is broken down into two smaller compounds that are better prepared for digestion. Compounds are combined atoms, or combined molecules, or combined anything into one unit. We call that unit a compound. Can we get back to hydrolysis, please? Sure. Enzymes, substances that bring about chemical changes without being changed themselves, are critical to the hydrolysis process. All enzymes are proteins, but not all proteins are enzymes. We'll talk a ton about proteins in a while, but for now, back to enzymes. They carry out specific tasks in digestion, almost like escorts for other molecules and compounds. There's a quick way to recognize an enzyme. Most enzyme names end in the suffix ASE, sucrase, maltase, etc. We'll talk about these workhorses more later. But for now, let's get back to digestion. In chemical digestion, hormones are also important. Hormones are the messenger molecules of the body. Hormones are the triggers that tell the organs what's going on so that those organs can kick in and send out the enzymes. Okay, so let's follow some food from the point it enters the body to the point it, well, <laughs> exits. Digestion begins in the mouth. Chewing breaks food up and mixes it with saliva. You know, spit. Once the chewed food is mixed with saliva, it becomes what's called a bolus. A bolus is just the small ball of chewed food that forms before swallowing. Swallowing pushes the bolus into the esophagus. But once it's in there, peristalsis, the rhythmic muscular contractions of the gastrointestinal tract, pushes the food down the esophagus. Let's take a look at this process. First, the food enters the mouth. There, we chew the food and prepare it for its journey into the gastrointestinal tract. We swallow the bolus, and the action of peristalsis pushes it down the esophagus and through a door-like opening called the cardiac sphincter to the stomach. Once the food is in the stomach, the cardiac sphincter closes behind the bolus to prevent it from re-entering the esophagus. If any food and stomach juices slip back up to the esophagus, then you know what you've got. A heartburn. The gastric acids from the stomach irritate the esophagus, causing the burning effect. The stomach continues the digestive process until the food is passed through to a second sphincter, the pyloric sphincter, and into the small intestine. You see, the stomach is really just a holding tank for foodstuff before it enters the small intestines where the real digestion takes place. Once the food passes the pyloric sphincter, it goes into the first of three segments of the small intestine, the duodenum. When the food passes into the small intestine, it's in the form of a semi-liquid mass called chyme. The pyloric sphincter ensures that chyme does not pass back up into the stomach. Thank goodness for the pyloric sphincter, huh? So, let's see if we can keep our sphincters straight. Remember, there are two sphincters, and they operate in alphabetical order. That is, the cardiac at the top of the stomach comes before the pyloric at the bottom of the stomach. So, just remember CPs, 
for cardiac and pyloric sphincters. So food passes through the pyloric sphincter to get to the almost 10 feet of small intestine. The small intestine has three segments, the duodenum, the jejunum, and the ileum. Most of the digestion process takes place in these three segments. To remember the order of the segments, just remember the phrase, don't jump in. The small intestine is made up of hundreds of folds. These folds are covered with little projections called villi, and the villi are covered with microvilli. These microvilli increase the surface area of the small intestine for maximum absorption. Here, enzymes control key chemical reactions that assist in the absorption of nutrients, such as the carrying of nutrients into the walls of the small intestine en route to the bloodstream. These enzyme-assisted processes occur over and over again until all the nutrients are absorbed. There's another sphincter at the end of the small intestine, the ileocecal valve, that the chyme passes through en route to the large intestine. Once the chyme is in the large intestine, much of the liquid is withdrawn from it and bacteria digests any remaining food, leaving a semi-solid mass called feces. Here, water helps food speed through the last step of digestion. The final absorption of nutrients takes place in the large intestine. After the nutrients have been absorbed, the feces passes out of the body through the last sphincter, the anus. In short, food is digested as it moves through the gastrointestinal tract, mainly the small intestine. Along the way, nutrients are passed into the blood and lymph vessels. This process is called absorption. Absorption takes place as nutrients pass through the small intestine villi into the blood and lymph vessels. This is how our body gets the benefits from all the good stuff we eat. Okay, so let's take another look at digestion. The digestion process works like this. First, remember the process of digestion is both mechanical and chemical. Both forms of digestion begin in the mouth. Food enters the mouth. You chew it up, mix it with saliva, swallow it to form a bolus, and pass it through the esophagus. The bolus is pushed along through the esophagus by peristalsis, the rhythmic muscular contractions of the gastrointestinal tract. Once the bolus passes through the esophagus, it then passes through the cardiac sphincter. Once through the cardiac sphincter, it enters the stomach and the cardiac sphincter closes so the bolus can't backtrack and give you heartburn. So the bolus enters the stomach and is churned further through peristalsis in preparation for the small intestines. But in order to get from the stomach to the small intestine, the bolus, which is now in the form of chyme, must pass through the pyloric sphincter to get to the small intestine. The small intestine has three segments, the duodenum, jejunum, and the ileum. Once the chyme is in the small intestine, most of the chemical digestion begins. Here, enzymes control key chemical reactions that assist in the absorption of nutrients, such as carrying nutrients into the walls of the small intestine en route to the bloodstream. This happens over and over again until all the nutrients are absorbed. Chyme passes from the small intestine through the next sphincter, the ileocecal valve, to the large intestine. In the large intestine, water absorption helps speed up digestion. What's left of the food, after water is absorbed, is now in the form of feces and passes through to the final sphincter, the anus. And that's digestion for you.